Welcome back. Well, proving he is a force to be reckoned with in the world of politics. Our next guest has already been named co-chair of the RNC Youth Advisory Council, established his own conservative news service, and co-authored and advised Alabama Senator Katie Britt in her State of the Union RNC response. And by the way, I didn't mention this. He's only 17 years old. And he is with us in the yeah. building this morning. Uh, Brylan Hollyhand is joining us. Great to have you yeah. on. Author of nice the new book, you. One Generation Away, Why Now is the Time to Restore American Freedom. Um, so nice to have you in. 17 years old. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. That's we, right. We were talking about what we were doing when we were 17, and you're making us both look tough. <laughs> like Just that, awful. Yeah. Uh, but I want to start with, with Katie Britt. So sure. she, freshman mm -hmm. Republican senator mm -hmm. from Alabama, yes. uh, delivered the State of the Union response uh, two weeks ago yesterday, yes. actually, um, from her kitchen. Yes. She was criticized. She was panned sure. by Saturday Night Live. Um, I think her delivery, this was sort of the moment for her to introduce herself to the American people. There are all sorts of rumors that she's on the, the short list <laughs> to run with Trump as VP. Um, you worked with her in what capacity? Sure, yes. Yeah. So Katie Britt, a, a personal uh, dear friend of mine, I endorsed her campaign when she was polling 2%. Nobody knew who Katie Britt was, and I believed in her. I believed that she could be the future of the party, and boy, was I right. I mean, now she's, she's given the State of the Union response. So could not be proud of her, could not be proud of her performance and her delivery in that speech. Uh, we spoke twice over the phone before she actually gave the speech. Uh, that morning I was kind of looking through some excerpts from the speech that her team was kind enough to send over. So I, you know, my, she asked for advice on how to connect with our generation. And I said, look, you have to talk about things we know about, things that are relevant. Uh, you right. know, speaking of the, of the Lincoln Riley thing that had happened just a few days before, mm -hmm. that really hit home with my generation. That really connected personally with my generation. That's a college student on a college campus that was two or three hours from my hometown. And so that really, really hit of like, hey, this isn't just something going on down in Texas at the border. Georgia's not a border state and it still happened in, in Georgia and right. you know so that that really hit home I think she did a great job could not be proud of her and I've heard some rumors too of, of maybe a VP pick so now you, you can't pick Trump's brain yeah. you can't guess what she's yes. gonna do. So I want to yeah, ask you point. about that because yeah. there have been a lot of rumors a lot of talk going around that maybe she is in the short list to be Donald Trump's VP but many are saying the biggest criticism would be that she's too young she's sure. a freshman senator I'm <laughs> sure people have told you that yes. you're too young if time were two in her life how do you respond to that? Hey well listen I was, I was you know joking backstage uh, when we put this book together when I came up with this idea, the first publishing company that we pitched this to said, oh, you're too young, come back to us after college. And here we are today with this fully finished yeah. book that will be published in July. And that's what I'm so excited about. You know, we wanted to give Newsmax the exclusive this morning to start off our New York Media Day. Uh, I officially have, have written this book and I could not be more excited to announce with all of you. Uh, you know, today, starting today, pre-orders are available everywhere. Anywhere books are sold, you can go pre-order the book. You can go to brylandbook.com brylandbook.com, B-R-I-L-Y-N, book.com, and it will be available everywhere books are sold uh, in person on July 9th. So we're so excited for that. But the same, you know, the same message that Katie Britt shared in her and her delivery, the same message that we shared with her you know, to, to get out to mm -hmm. my generation is the same message of this book. It's completely relevant yeah. uh, because this is about saving American freedom. Look, this book isn't just for my peers. It, it starts with my peers. It, it's you know, for, for people in my generation that are concerned that there's not going to be a future of American freedom for them to grow up in. Uh, you know, it, it's also for parents who are concerned about the indoctrination that their children are facing today. This book helps you combat that. This book helps you kind of fight back against that indoctrination that my generations face. This book's also for grandparents who want to talk to their children and grandchildren about conservatism and start that conversation but don't know how. This book is for you. You can pre it starting today. Can I ask you just so I, I mean again so you're, you're a junior right? <laughs> yes. So yes, you're, you're starting the process of looking at colleges and I all am. that stuff. What are yeah. your what are your peers? Sure. Yeah. Think about they, all this. They've right? been actually supportive, and I it's really got to be tough it. to be conservative sure. in high school. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's the cool thing. Look, I've done this for seven years. Uh, this book is seven years of conversations with the American people, and I've got to travel the country, speak on college campuses, and speak to your older, you know, Republican groups as well. You know, I've got to speak to as many Americans as possible and listen to even more of them. And when I'm hearing the same thing that you're hearing, and it's no surprise at all to the Americans, you know, watching at home today. Uh, they believe that the future is dark. Right. And this book is to start that revival of hope, that there is hope, there is prosperity for not my, just my generation, but generations to come. But it starts right now. That's why the, you know, the title is, the time is now, to, you know, to restart that revival of American freedom. And that's what I think is so important to have this conversation, you know, going into the election, but also this is, this is way bigger than November. This goes into the future, and that's why it's so important right now to, wow. to start this. You, so you have can pre -order. such a bright future. You know, just, I mean, my <laughs> goodness. It. Generally speaking, we have to carry the segments. Um, <laughs> but not, well. not the case right now. Now, I, just a quick question, and, and sure. I know that you're in Alabama, certainly sure. a red state in the South. Um, 
What are people your age? And, and there are polls. Axios just had a poll a couple yep. of weeks ago about 18 to 34. Yes. So that you're right under that threshold. But that's yes. your that's your group. Of, that's your generation. Um, and they're overwhelmingly supporting Donald Trump. Yes. It's something like 48%. Yes. Which, to put that in perspective, four huge. years ago, it it's was huge. less than 20%. Yes. What do people yes. think about Joe Biden that, that are your age? Oh, they're not fans. I mean, I, I've even, you know, we, we did, you know, college campus speaking tours and have been, you know, talking directly with my generation. Uh, even people that voted for Joe Biden in, in 2020, or maybe their parents voted for Joe Biden, mm. maybe they weren't voting age. They're like, oh, look, we don't agree with everything that Donald Trump says, but mean tweets are better than high gas prices. Mean tweets are better than inflation. So that's what yeah. we're constantly yeah. hearing. The big thing here, though, you speak about my generation. Look, you know, we you know, Republicans underperformed in the 2022 midterms. That's no surprise. I called out the National Party and said the big issue there was we weren't engaging with my generation. I called for a seat at the table. But there was just one problem with that. There was no table for my generation to sit at. Right. So last January, I met with the RNC, and we founded the RNC's inaugural Youth Advisory Council. And since then, the, we spent the past year engaging with my generation, registering my generation to vote. Look, we all know there's no surprise. There's new leadership for the RNC. I couldn't be more excited about that. I think the future's bright for the RNC. I think the future's bright for the party because we I now get to work as the co-chair of the RNC. Chief Advisory Council directly with the Trump family to make sure that we get you know voters yeah. registered to vote for President Trump in November. That's my goal. That's our focus. And I think it's possible. Yeah. A Republican hasn't won the youth vote in decades, but decades. I think it's more possible this generation. That's why this book's so Politics important. Politics in the future book. for you? Hey, maybe. You know, that's everybody asking. Are you going to run for president? That's a yes. That's, that's not my yes. focus. Brian, come on. Don't, don't give me that, of course. <laughs> right? Future president. Future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks Good luck with the me. book again. All Appreciate that information it. will be available on our website, absolutely. newsmax.com. We have to give you all the exclusive. We are so happy to have it. Thank you, Brian. Um, we have lots more to go this morning here on Wake Up America. Coming up, Matt Schlapp and Mercedes Schlapp are going to join us after the break with more on why former President Trump is